Welcome back to 60 Minutes. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a drone. The small, agile and amazingly cheap flying machines that are revolutionising the way we see the world. Drones are the new frontier in aviation. From sport to policing, wedding videos to warfare, these amazing flying machines can go anywhere, film anything. It seems the sky really is the limit. So how much have you spent on them? Um, this one cost us $300. No prizes for guessing why they call this the shitbox rally. A smoke machine here. And... So a smoke machine if you're being pursued by the highway cops. Yeah, we can you can get away. Get away. 250 old bombs that have escaped the wreckers yard for one final heroic mission. An epic 4,000 kilometre bash from Perth to Darwin in the aid of charity. Uh, well, it's a yellow submarine. Um, we did have a propeller on the back, but that fell off. Um... But today, this old technology is about to meet the new. Welcome to the drone age. Holding position. Head starts spinning up. If you're a regular viewer of this program, I reckon by now you can spot the drone shot. It happens in the landscape when the reporter gets what I call their drone moment. You can get it walking along a beach. You can get it climbing a mountain. You can get it driving a rally car. Matter of fact, I think I'm getting it now. I mean, it certainly gives you another perspective, doesn't it, the drone? It does. It's, it's such a powerful tool. It gives you radical change of perspective. And if you can give us um, updates every now and again... If you... The men operating this eye in the sky, Glenn McGarry and Remy Epron, run a business that couldn't have existed a few years ago. It's all made possible by the extraordinary recent leaps in computer and video technology. Where's this going to go? What's the limit? Well, I guess the sky's the limit. It seems drones are everywhere. Rounding up sheep to tracking bushfires. They can bring you as close to the Niagara Falls as you'll ever get without going over in a barrel and so deep into an active volcano you can almost feel the heat. The ability to move something in three-dimensional space, to go and monitor something. It could be monitoring wildlife, it could be monitoring forests. People are trying to use these flying machines to inspect bridges or whatever other object you need to move to hard-to-reach places with a flying machine can just do it on its own. So it gives rise to enormous flights of imagination. <laughs> it does. So what the vehicle is doing right now is it's first figuring out the trajectory of the ball, then it figures out where it should move to intercept it. Hey, do you want to try it? Good one. At the forefront of this drone revolution is inventor and robotics engineer Raffaello Dondrea. Oh, no, I'm that sorry. A, that's it tries. I'm apologizing to my machine. At his flying machine lab here in Zurich, RAF is using sophisticated computing instructions, or algorithms, to develop drones that can think for themselves. I think he's got it. 
What's interesting about this algorithm is that it's doing this about 50 times per second. So every 20 milliseconds, it's recalculating the trajectory of the ball and where it should go to intercept it. Am I here at the beginning of something big? I mean, is this like dropping in to see Mr. Gutenberg with his first printing press? Is this going to change the world? Well, I think this is a very visual demonstration of what machines can do, but I think it's a gradual process. The soaring interest in drones means that the skies will soon be a clutter with these flying machines. They're delivering beer, not very safely. Don't move. And extracting teeth. It came out. The drones have got the tooth. Not recommended. Here in Australia, the law governing unmanned aerial vehicles is a grey area. The laws of physics, however, are black and white. A beautiful girl makes a beautiful world. There you are, on that special day, and love is not the only thing in the air. The latest fad in wedding videos is capturing all those precious, perfect moments. I whispered in your ear, darling, I Right up until... The drone kisses a groom. I'm so sorry. We don't know if the marriage survived, but the camera guy ended up with a YouTube hit he could have done without. I think it's kind of funny. I've been doing video professionally 10 years, trying to make great work, but the one thing that everybody wants to see is somebody getting hit in the head of the quadcopter. There you go. The dangers of drones aren't restricted to their civilian use. For years, only the American military had the technology and the money to launch unmanned aircraft. They've been used with deadly efficiency, killing hundreds of terrorists, and by some accounts, even more innocent civilians. Now there's a prospect of terrorists deploying drones, which has Raffaello Dondrea worried. I think their use in terrorism should be of a concern simply because they are so small. I mean, you could imagine having a hundred of them or a thousand of them distributed with their own payload. And if you have a whole bunch of them, it's very difficult to take them all down. So I, I am concerned about their use in terrorism. The rise of the drone is also giving rise to a brave new world, not least in the development of unmanned aerial surveillance. All parameters normal. The Yandamara 25, you have a P6 warrant. Enter for limited recon only. Copy that and moving in. Drones will make it possible to identify and follow anyone anywhere. Second subject identified. Also, registered tenant. Copy that. Stand by for sophisticated surveillance systems like facial recognition, vehicle matches description, and automatic number plate identification. Threat level four, malicious intent. While not yet being used by police in Australia, they are all available and ready to be made airborne. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing to see here. What about invasion of our privacy? If you're really going to think about privacy, I think you need to take a step back and say, how does this compare to the fact that anybody with a mobile phone can be walking around with their camera, taking pictures, taking video? Um, to me, that's more of an invasion of privacy and more of a concern than, you know, the few flying vehicles looking at crowds from far away. For Raf, the frontier, is aviation intelligence. He's programmed his little quadcopters to balance poles and even build walls. So you can use drones to actually build structures? We did a proof of concept where we built a six meter tall structure made out of 1500 
foam bricks. It was really an exploration of what you could achieve with flying machines. Um, how could they aid in the construction process if you don't have to build scaffolding? If you snap your hand really fast upwards, it does a flip, yes. Oh, right. And for a drone pilot of my caliber, even controlling the machine with a wave of my hand is a cinch. If you pull your hand towards your head, it will come closer to you. Almost. <laughs> but these are not circus tricks. They're putting us on the path to drones that, for better or worse, will change the way we live. And there's no going back. I think that technology can be used to improve our way of life, but it can also be misused and abused, and we should be pushing the boundaries, at least what we try to do in our group is push the boundaries of what autonomous systems can do. And the cat's out of the bag. The cat's out of the bag. You can't put it back in again. You can't put it back in again.